It's true, I cancelled my V13 and instead ordered the Sherman S. Boom! Video done! Oh, no, 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 just kidding. Stick around to find out why I made this decision and also why the V13 is still the devil on my shoulder. But then again, Sherman S, let's go! Don't get me wrong, the V11 has been the perfect starter wheel for me. It had enough battery and motor power for me to grow into as a new rider. It delivered what I wanted, which was a vehicle class wheel. For me, to be a vehicle class wheel encompasses the ability to run errands, replace car trips, attending appointments, and doing shopping, as well as traveling to visit friends and family. It requires the wheel to have enough features to allow this effectively and safely. Suspension also allows the comfortable seated riding position for longer distances as well. However, now just after uh, 4,000 kilometers or three months of riding, I'm already on the beach. G'day. I'm on the beach constantly and constant range anxiety. When I consider my next wheel, I am definitely comparing it to my current riding experience on the InMotion V11. Having laid out my wish list and current limitations, it should be obvious why my decision came down to either an InMotion or Leverkim. Why is the V13 the devil on my shoulder? I think it's simply the allure of a new wheel and the promise from in motion of unlimited power, no cutouts. Superb build quality, next generation safety redundancies, Purcell Smart BMS and 22 inch cruising comfort. Surely 22 inch is an upgrade from the V11's 20 inch wheel, right? You may have seen me in the groups trying to justify the height, weight and 3000 watt hour battery of the V13. I found myself performing mental gymnastics which was exhausting, trying to convince myself that it is the right wheel for me. Then attempting to guesstimate how far the 3000 watt hour battery would go, figuring out if I could even step up onto it comfortably. I still believe it isn't too tall for me. I've been slowly moving away from the V13 for weeks now. When the first V13 video dropped, I was hyped for the features mentioned earlier. Ever since then, it has gone downhill for me. The low quality videos that followed killed my hype and enthusiasm. InMotion then brag about the heaviest motor and rim on an EUC, which was further disheartening. Since this destroys many of the most enjoyable aspects of riding for me, such as how responsive, playful, carvy and nimble the wheel feels. In motion are shipping with a knobby tire and show confusion at the idea of a street tire and even uncertainty if it'll fit on the rim. It's very hard to find a, a street tire. You might not be able to put the tubeless street tire uh, onto the rim. Probably you can help us to choose. I was shocked. It shows how out of touch they are with the community and what we want. After I had said time and time again, I would wait for batch one reviews before deciding. They announced the huge pre-order discount. This is significant at 1000 Australian dollars. I spoke to my local shop and they said I would be able to move my pre-order to a different wheel if needed. I went in head first on the V13. I was convinced I wanted a 22 inch comfort cruiser class wheel. The promised quality, limitless power and near impossible cutout potential had me frothing at the mouth. The high pedals and potentially high center of mass are further detriments. Let me be clear, I'm as concerned with batch one issues as anyone. My local shop has good customer service and support for batch one issues. If you don't, then proceed with extreme caution. The air suspension on the V11 slowly leaks from the bottom chamber to the top and sometimes from the top chamber out. Continual maintenance is required to keep in a comfortable and predictable suspension range. Extrapolate that out to four air suspension pistons on the V13, and well, that's gonna suck for regular upkeep. 
Sherman's integrated fork style suspension appears superior with the ability to easily make on the fly adjustments and not having to constantly evaluate the air pressure. This is a massive plus for me. When considering the nimbleness, simply look at the two videos. One wheel is getting thrown around and appears light, nimble enough to play on, the other stiff and lumbering. Having changed my V11 tyre to a heavier Michelin, I know firsthand just how dramatic the difference is from increasing the rotating mass on the ride feel. The change in gyroscopic effect is massive since rotating mass has a non-linear impact on rotational inertia. So the formula we're going to use for rotational inertia is I, that's the symbol for rotational inertia, equals the mass times the radius squared. Okay, so again, the longer that radius the more rotational inertia. Okay. The knock-on to acceleration, braking and cornering cannot be overstated enough. Combine that with a 22-inch tyre and in motion congratulating themselves for making the heaviest motor ever. The motor is yeah. much heavier than all of its counterparts in the market. Began to crush my dreams for the V13. These factors will make it excellent for straight line comfort and chewing up miles. However, the style of riding I do is a large array of slow winding paths to faster wide open areas. A huge gyroscopic force is difficult to slow down, which I feel isn't just impractical, but could be dangerous. The V11 lights and waterproofing have impressed me. Extrapolating this to the V13 and what I've seen of its promised build quality makes me sad it won't be my next wheel. I feel that InMotion have dropped the ball by reusing four times air suspension and seemingly forgetting a seat and kickstand as they were afterthoughts. This really makes me question InMotion. Um, kickstand and uh, seat, we have uh, done some prototypes and uh, right now we have finished all the testings, it works so great. Additionally, InMotion has gone quiet since the cutout video and then blamed the rider, which soured my taste. It seems as if they've gone silent on the topic of the top speed, which makes me very suspicious of potential issues the wheel may face. What will you be the unlocked max speed? Uh, yes, for the kickstand. 100% I'm excited for the new tech and safety features in the V13. It appears to be of exceptional build quality. I wanted the idea of a 22 inch cruiser rather than a practical 20 inch wheel. It's simply in a package I don't want when compared to the Sherman S. Leapercom has a good track record on the Sherman and the build quality of the Sherman S appears to be no exception. The Sherman S may have a solid axle style motor and not a hollow core like the V13. On one hand it is more water resistant, on the other it's not as strong. It isn't a jumping wheel for me and I'm a lighter rider so this isn't really a factor. There's a lot of talk if it will have enough power. Well, since I'm moving from the 84 volt, 2200 watt motor in the V11, it's already a big improvement jumping to 100 volts and 3000 watt. Additionally, watching EV's comments on the matter, I tend to agree. Pointless to go any more than 100 volts. You can get pretty close to the same power with 100 volts. There's things that can be done. So you're just adding more complications when you get a higher voltage wheel. It is, however, $400 more than the V13 early bird discount bringing it to 6,100 Australian dollars. Holy shit. You must consider what EUCs mean to you. This isn't just a toy for me. This is a mode of transportation, recreation and lifestyle. That makes me want to get up in the morning, get out exploring into the world in a way not many other things do. Good, so you actually found this as one of your options. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, amazing. <laughs> so all of those points don't really matter when compared to how it rides and feels. Cornering and carving is one of the best feelings on an EUC. It just feels so stable, so smooth. 
Oh man, it's glorious. I Evie's comments on the matter finally pushed me over to the Sherman S. I rang my shop the next day to snag the last Sherman S of the shipment, which is scheduled in four weeks' time. So, feeling happy about that. It's about the Sherman S if you have a minute. Fantastic. Uh, just wondering uh, if you've got an ETA or an estimate on the delivery. I originally thought the V13 was the perfect wheel for me, long range cruiser, but it's six kilograms heavier, 600 watt hours less than the Sherman S. And that's the crux of the matter. 100% I'm excited for the new tech and safety features in the V13. The promises of in motion are enticing, but have zero evidence to back them up. Crazy power and speed still call to me from the V13. Instead, I listen to reason. I wanted the idea of a 22 inch cruiser, but have realized that it's impractical and won't suit me. Why not get both? Well, I can't afford that, and will also likely have to sell my V11. So I've come to realize that the V13 isn't my dream work, but the Lever Kim Sherman S is perhaps Cinderella's glass slipper that'll perfectly fit me. It doesn't matter to me the name of the brand on the side of my wheel, as long as it gets me home ride after ride, whether it's rain, hail or shine, so I can do it again the next day. But after I said all that, Sherman S, let's go!